Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good Sunday. I wanted to get on here today and talk a little bit about psychiatric and psychological diagnoses that are handed down from so-called experts in the mental health field. And I want to talk about the fact that the DSM-5 and the ICD-10 are being manipulated and adjusted on the basis of pharmaceutical profiting. What I mean by that is that as new pharmaceuticals are developed, psychotropic medications, uh, SSRIs, psychiatric drugs, antidepressants, you name it, um, as these drugs are being developed, what they are doing in clinical trials is determining what symptoms these medications appear to be treating. Uh, one thing to consider when looking at any of the clinical trial data is that most of it is very limited in terms of the time frame that it covers. And by doing this, the pharmaceutical industry can present data that is, in a lot of cases, extremely inaccurate. Because if you only have a few month long trial and the negative impacts of a pharmaceutical intervention don't appear until after that time frame, that allows them the loophole to be able to claim that the medication is effective when in a lot of cases it's not only not effective, but can be harmful to the patient. And you're probably wondering why I'm bringing this up. Well, I'm bringing this up because the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria that is altered, um, as well as the uh, mental health diagnostic criteria that is put into the ICD-10, these diagnostic criteria are adjusted to be able to treat new pharmaceuticals that are coming onto market. So in a way, we could say that they are creating diagnostic criteria so that they have the potential to profit off of prescribing certain medications. Now from a medical ethical standpoint, I would like you to consider whether or not you believe that that conduct is ethical. To me, it feels a bit like insider trading. It feels a little bit like these diagnoses are being handed out to enrich the psychiatrist or the physician that's prescribing it. And the patients are largely underinformed or uninformed about the negative consequences associated with taking these prescribed medications. I haven't even touched on the fact that in a lot of instances, they may have an underlying medical condition and the mental health symptoms that are being observed aren't necessarily correlated with the legitimate mental health diagnosis, it could be an underlying infection. And that happens quite often because when we are physically unwell, that has a tendency to impact our mental health as well. So I wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about that because there is a lot of psychiatric abuse and psychiatric malpractice in the industry that claims to want to do what is best for the patient. But when you look at the way that these diagnoses are handled, What's interesting is if you go and seek therapy and you receive a diagnosis and um, that psychiatrist suggests medication, it is very rare that you're going to run across a psychiatrist that doesn't suggest you staying on that medication indefinitely. And you would want to ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, there's a lot of people in the medical establishment that acknowledge that a patient is a 
best served in, ter in terms of their um, financial well-being if they remain a patient. So if they get better, then they've lost that source of income. They've lost that person's um, continued involvement in the medical mill. So one thing to consider asking um, any psychiatrist or physician that you see if you're suffering from what you perceive to be a mental health complication, you would certainly want to ask them, what are their plans treatment-wise to help you to cope with whatever symptoms you have? What is their long-term strategy so that this isn't a, a lifetime problem for you? So that this doesn't become a so that this doesn't become a chronic problem for you. Another thing to ask is what sorts of interventions are available based upon the diagnostic criteria that you're saying you fit. Um, what interventions are available that are non-pharmaceutical? The answers you get to those questions will tell you a great deal about whether or not that practitioner actually has your best interests at heart, or if they're solely giving you a diagnosis in an effort to enrich themselves financially. As much as we want to believe that all practitioners are ethical, it is very evident that that is not the case. And when you look at mental health diagnoses uh, specifically, something that has always been a huge concern to me is that they do not seem to be offering remedy other than in the form of creating a pharmaceutical patient for life. That is not conducive to health. There are certainly lifestyle changes that any patient can make that are going to improve their mental health. Exercise is hugely beneficial. Proper nutrition is hugely beneficial. It's important to be able to trust the therapist that you're talking to. You wanna be able to explain the symptoms that you're experiencing without feeling like they just see you as a financial resource. It can be challenging to find a therapist that is on the same page with you when it comes to these sorts of things. And another thing to always keep in mind is that life itself is meant to have ups and downs. We're not meant to be happy all the time. And if we have that expectation, then we're probably not looking at life through a realistic lens. So there's a bit of neuroses that goes along with anyone who expects that they should be constantly happy um, and medicating happy is not legitimate happiness. Giving yourself a chemical lobotomy with a pharmaceutical intervention is not a way to live. Something that a lot of people also don't want to talk about when it comes to these SSRI medications and these psychotropic medications is that they are heavily neurotoxic. They increase the likelihood of early onset dementia and Alzheimer's. They can have a slew of adverse event reactions. Um, and it's just very important to be fully informed before you consent to treatment with some of these medications whose impacts on your physical health can be lifelong. It is always better to be over-informed than under-informed because the more that you know about any medical decisions you're making, the more empowered you can be as a patient and the less easily manipulated you are by the medical establishment. That's not to say that all people in the medical field are like this. That's certainly not the case. 
but you definitely have to be selective in what medical advice you take because ultimately your health is in your own hands and if a practitioner gives you bad advice it could cost you your life medical error is still the third leading cause of death so keep that in mind um, these practitioners may have degrees but that doesn't mean that they are infallible and it doesn't mean that they don't make mistakes I suggest that if you're struggling with depression that you first consider what does your exercise look like on a daily basis what does your nutrition look like on a daily basis um, also I would consider do you have a support structure do you have friends and family that are positive influences in your life that give you positive feedback that help to uplift you and help you to feel more optimistic about your life's potential we are a species that relies on each other the more isolated we are from each other the harder it is to maintain mental health. So if you're in a situation where you happen to be isolated and you're feeling depressed, that's actually normal and shouldn't be seen as a form of a mental illness. Please keep your environmental factors in mind when being given any sort of diagnoses. And if the mental health practitioner or therapist that you're speaking to doesn't inquire about what your environment is like, then I would strongly consider that that person probably shouldn't be practicing in that profession because they're not asking the questions necessary to really get to the root cause of why you're having mental health difficulties. I hope this message has been empowering and helpful today. God bless all of you and know that you are worthy, you are loved, and you are valuable. And please do not let anyone make you feel less than. Whether you struggle with mental health problems, whether you have physical disabilities, whatever your struggles are, I firmly believe God does not give us more than we can handle and a lot of times he gives us those challenges so that we can be an inspiration to others. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Sunday and a happy 4th of July.